Hey there, my name is Dr. Quark and today I'm going to make the strongest cocktails in the world. I'm going to make some super strong cocktails consisting only of alcohol, well, almost. They won't necessarily taste good, but they're sure to be powerful. Of course, I could just pour some absinthe into the glass, add a drop of lemon juice and say, here's the strongest cocktail in the world, <laughs> but that's not the kind of man I am. It's much more interesting to make cocktails that have history, with some kind of hint at a balance, and that's what I'm going to do today. Hit like and let's go. The first cocktail is called Aunt Roberta, and it comes with a compelling story, although I don't know how true it is. It was first created in Alabama back in the 1800s by a woman known as Aunt Roberta. She left her abusive home as a child and worked as a cotton picker and a prostitute before starting to sell cocktails of gin and moonshine from a makeshift shack where she processed the alcohol herself. These incredibly strong drinks were said to be responsible for the deaths of at least 34 people within two years. The Aunt Roberta was one of the recipes that she created during this period, but she could never remember the exact measures used due to being heavy intoxicated herself so the actual ingredients vary depending on who you ask. Roberta died at an old age of 32 and never managed to work her way out of poverty. But fortunately, or unfortunately, a customer of Roberta's, Billy Joe Sprague, a raccoon hunter, thought that her legacy deserved to live on through her cocktail. He used the drink as a signature piece upon opening several cocktail bars and became a millionaire off the back of it. The story is kind of sad, but the cocktail is pretty awful, so I guess this balances it out. I'm gonna use a stirring glass to chill and dilute the cocktail to make it a little bit more palatable, if you can use this word here. So, to the stirring glass, we're gonna add absinthe. This one is 60% alcohol, which is strange because uh, this exact absinthe used to be 72 or 74, but nonetheless, it's stronger than vodka and most alcohols. So Two parts of absinthe, which is 40 milliliters, one and one third ounce. The next thing we're gonna need is brandy. Here it is. It is a sherry brandy, it's nice and sweet, and actually I'm hesitant to add it to this strange cocktail, but okay, who cares. One part, two thirds of an ounce, 20 milliliters. The third alcohol in this cocktail is gin, which we're gonna need just a touch. Third of an ounce, 10 milliliters. Then we're gonna need some vodka, three parts, which is 60 milliliters, two ounces. And the last alcohol we're gonna need is blackberry or blackcurrant liquor. Not blackcurrant liqueur, just a strong spirit made out of blackberry. It's without added sugar, just like vodka or any other alcohol which is in here right now. But I'm gonna cheat a little bit and add blackcurrant liqueur which is creme de cassis. Yes, it's like uh, 20 or even 15% alcohol and it's with sugar, but it's just one part, 20 milliliters to third of an ounce. So uh, I think it's gonna make our cocktail a little bit better. But if you have some blackberry or blackcurrant distillate, use it. Two thirds of an ounce, 20 milliliters. Fill the stirring glass with ice and stir it thoroughly to chill and dilute the cocktail and strain to the cocktail glass. And this is how you make Aunt Roberta. It's pretty nasty. I'm gonna say uh, that it's not my favorite cocktail in the world. And the addition of creme de cassis was a smart choice. At least now it is almost like a, a real cocktail. Ooh. Not recommended. Actually, this cocktail could be passable if it's not for the absinthe. It doesn't need any absinthe. I would add maybe a little bit of lemon juice. Uh, sugar is okay, creme de cassis takes care of that. So I'm gonna say don't add absinthe uh, and add a little bit of uh, lemon juice and don't make this cocktail also. <laughs> The next cocktail is called Nikolashka. A simple cocktail with cognac or brandy, lemon slice, coffee powder and sugar. It is said that Nicholas II of Russia liked to drink cognac this way, but I haven't found any reliable sources with this information. Apart from cognac, other kinds of brandy can be used. Sometimes you can see recipes with vodka instead of cognac, but I don't recommend that. Also often a lemon slice is peeled or topped just with sugar cube without coffee. So let's make this strange cocktail. To the tulip glass, 
add brandy, one and a half ounce, 45 milliliters. Put one lemon slice on top of the glass. On top of the lemon slice, add half a teaspoon of caster sugar and half a teaspoon of freshly ground coffee. One way of drinking Nikolashka is to place the lemon slice on your tongue, then drink the cognac, but keep it in your mouth for 30 seconds and swallow it after that. Another way is to drink cognac first, then eat the lemon slice with sugar and coffee. There is a third way, according to which the lemon slice with sugar and coffee is chewed for a few moments to release and uh, mingle the flavors, then drink the cognac and chew on the lemon some more before swallowing everything. I will drink the cognac first and then eat the lemon. It's not that bad, but I don't see why you would want to do this if you have good brandy or cognac. On the contrary, if your brandy is shit, <laughs> this cocktail is for you, because coffee, sugar and lemon will hide that fact pretty effectively. But my brandy is good, so I don't need it. To the next cocktail. The next cocktail is Zombie. Don Beach, formerly known as Ernest Raymond Beaumont Gant, created a zombie cocktail in the mid-1930s. He made it in his restaurant for a friend before his flight to San Francisco, whereby he was served three. The name of the cocktail came about as when Beach's friend returned from the trip and complained that due to the cocktails he felt like a zombie for the entire trip. Although the zombie has a fruity taste, it has an extremely high alcohol content, so much so that the Don the Beachcomber restaurants only sold two zombies to each customer. The original recipe was kept secret, and besides, all the people who tasted Don Beach's zombie left our world long ago. So today there are many variations, here's just one. Cocktail is shaken, and to the shaker we're gonna add dark rum. I'm using spiced dark rum, which is technically not rum, but it's good in this cocktail. One ounce, 30 milliliters. White rum, also one ounce, 30 milliliters. Apricot brandy liqueur, it's not brandy, it's uh, liqueur. Half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Pineapple juice, two ounces, 60 milliliters. Freshly squeezed lime juice, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Although many recipes call for two teaspoons of powdered sugar, but I don't see the reason why you would do that. It's easier to add simple syrup. Half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Fill your shaker with ice and shake it vigorously, dedicating the shake to this comment. Fill the highball glass with a couple of ice balls and fine strain the cocktail. And garnish with a couple of cherries. <sighs> and this is how you make zombie. A great tiki cocktail. And it is indeed dangerous. You don't feel the booziness at all, but it is like 20 or 25 percent alcohol. So be careful. The next cocktail is the Sazerac, which is a close cousin of the old fashioned. I have made a couple versions of those. You can check them out here or there. It was born in the 1850s and it is the official cocktail of New Orleans since 2008. It is believed that the first Sazeracs were made with French brandy, Sazerac de Forge et Fils to be exact, and it's known that those first Sazeracs contained Peychaud's bitters, a bright red concoction with flavors of gentian and anise that was invented by the New Orleans resident Antoine Peychaud. Add some sugar and a dash of absinthe and you have a strong aromatic drink. Eventually, that French brandy was replaced with American rye whiskey, a spirit that grew in both popularity and availability during the 19th century. Many people make Sazerac with bourbon or rye whiskey or cognac or brandy, but I prefer mixing the two. So this recipe combines equal parts sherry brandy and bourbon because the two work together so perfectly. It produces a cocktail that simultaneously is soft and bold. To the stirring glass. Add a sugar cube, or you can use one teaspoon of caster sugar. Pay shows bitters, three dashes. Some people add a little bit of water to help dilute the sugar, but I prefer Angostura bitters, two dashes. Using the great equalizer, muddle the sugar. Bourbon, one and a half ounce, 45 milliliters. And brandy or cognac. Also, one and a half ounce, 45 milliliters. Stir a little and check for balance. Balance is present. Fill the stirring glass with ice 
and stir to chill and dilute. Rinse the chilled old-fashioned glass with absinthe and fine strain the cocktail. Express the oils from a lemon peel and garnish with it. And this is how you make Sazerac. It is a strong cocktail, maybe the strongest today, maybe except for Aunt Roberta. But it is pretty nice and balanced. It has sweetness to it, but it is about 37-38% alcohol, which is not nothing. If you like the old-fashioned, this one is definitely for you. Cheers. The last cocktail for today is called Bullfrog. Ah, Bullfrog. It is a party drink, essentially a variation on the Long Island iced tea, but instead of triple sec, we're gonna use blue curacao, and instead of cola, we're gonna use Red Bull or other energy drink. Disclaimer, don't mix alcohol and energy drinks. Don't do it. Your body will thank you the next day. For this cocktail, we're gonna need a highball glass, to which we're gonna add. Equal parts, 22 milliliters, three quarters of an ounce of vodka, tequila, gin, blue curacao liqueur, lemon juice. So three quarter ounce of everything. This is pure alcohol. Now stir it a little bit, fill the glass with ice and top up with energy drink. About one and a half ounce, 45 milliliters. Garnish with a lemon slice. And this is how you make bullfrog. It's very strong, but Red Bull covers all the alcohol flavor, so this cocktail is pure evil. Don't drink it. Tastes like just Red Bull. <laughs> and here is the best way to drink this cocktail. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments what cocktails did I miss. Maybe you know some stronger cocktails. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and Instagram. You can find all the recipes in text form on my website, dr-cork.com. The links are in the description to this video. If you want to support my channel and get early access to new videos and additional content, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. Thanks a lot. Drink responsibly. And as always, до свидос.